Okay, in this video we're going to look at part two of the drinks bottle carrier. So, it's this one right here that we're going to be working on. And we've got to draw three preliminary orthographic views of it. An elevation, an end elevation, and a plan. Now to complete this exercise, I've got a sheet of paper, A4. A3 is probably better, but I'm just going to use A4. I've got a pencil. And I'm also going to use a straight edge as well. Now remember, the straight edge is not for measuring or anything like that. It's simply to draw straight lines. In this task, the emphasis is on the word preliminary. So we don't need to be exact. We don't need to do exact measurements. In fact, we'll get penalised if we do do exact measurements. But uh, we can use a straight edge to keep our lines nice and neat. Now, I'm also, from time to time, probably going to use a rubber as well. And... I had a problem with some of the lines turning up on camera, so I think for my outlines I'm going to use a pen, but you don't have to. I'm doing that just so that they show up on camera a little better. So let's push all this to the side and take a look at the part in question. So we're working on part two right here. And it's quite a simple shape. In fact, what sometimes I like to do is, is in a piece of scrap paper, is just try and figure out what this looks like. And I think what it looks like is, I'm going to say that the elevation, from elevation direction, I'm going to go, I'm going to look along the direction of that pencil, like that. So, it's kind of, from the front, it kind of looks like this, a little bit. Okay. It's got that kind of shape to it. And there's a couple of holes through that surface, and there's a little hole through that surface, like that. I think that's what it's going to look like in the elevation. I've got a, I've got a semicircle going on in here. And I've got a kind of centre mark at that semicircle, which would kind of live in, in roughly there. So I think that's what it's going to look like. That's what I'm going to start with. And the first thing I'm going to worry about is getting this semicircle just right. So let's pass that to one side so as I can get started. Right, we're going to do this with a straight edge. And the first thing I'm going to do with my straight edge is set a bit of a baseline. So I'm not measuring or anything like that, but I'm putting, using construction lines, hopefully that's dark enough for you to see. Okay, we're going to go along here, and I'm going to say that my centre point from elevation is going to be right there. That's going to be the centre of my circle. Now, circles fit inside perfect squares, so my first job here is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build like a perfect square. But then in the end, I'm actually going to use the bottom half of it. So I think that's a pretty good perfect square. And I'm going to use the bottom half of that square to help me cons construct that semicircle. And the semicircle, I need to flip my page around here. The semicircle is going to live like that there. And like that there. So I think that's the bottom of my semicircle. Well, that's the inside of my semicircle, the bit that touches the handlebar. And then I've got, let's see, now that says that that's going to be a radius of 16 because it says here, I'm already starting to think about proportions. It says that it has to fit a 32 diameter handlebar. So the radius, half of that size, is going to be 16. Okay. And I can see that the plastic is three millimetres thick, which is roughly a fifth of 16. All right, so if that's that's 16 like that, then I think my plastic is going to be probably about that thick there. So let's put in some construction lines. Use my straight edge for this construction line like that. And it's smaller on this side than it is at this side. This side is slightly longer. Okay. I don't really mind that my construction lines are overlapping each other. That's fine at this stage. And also I want to put in a bit of thickness on this part right here, like that. And like that. Tidy that up a little bit. Okay. That looks like that has to be just a little bit longer. So I think as far as elevations go, that's probably it. 
Okay, that's my construction done. You would then go darker with your pencil and you would turn some of these construction lines into visible lines. Um, I'm going to use a pen for this, right, just so that it shows up on camera. But let's ask ourselves what would be visible at this stage. What would be visible at this stage? We'd be able to see that whole surface at the front right there. So let's lean a bit heavier and turn that into visible outlines. Now, if you're going to use a straight edge, my advice to you is use a straight edge for the construction lines, but when you come to do your outlines, do these freehand so that your drawing retains an element of hand drawnness about it. Because remember, if it's too perfect, if the SQA think that you've done this using a drawing board, then they'll start to get suspicious and you may find yourself losing marks because it is just too perfect. So, straight edge to work out construction and your, your visible lines should be hand drawn. Okay, so that's the visible detail. But what else would I see? Well, I've got a couple of holes going through this bit and I've got a hole going through this bit right here. So let's put them in. Okay, so I've got a little tiny hole, probably about there, and I've got slightly bigger holes there, just like that. Something else to notice about this is at the end of that's curved. So right at the bottom of that curve, I'm going to have to put in a piece of hidden detail. Okay, mm, probably around there, something like that. Alright, so that's the visible stuff and the hidden stuff, come to think of it. Let's put in some centre marks. So we've got a centre mark, or half a centre mark I should say, at that circle, like that. And we would have a centre line going through each of these holes, just like that. And that's the elevation done. Let's go ahead and do the plan version now. So we're back onto construction lines, so I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to send all these interesting lines straight up the page. Now remember a plan view is a view from the top, so you've got to imagine yourself somewhere above this uh, part and you're looking down on it and what can you see. So all these points of interest, I'm just projecting them using a construction line straight up the page. Let's do this little hole as well actually and think about it. Just like that. And again I'm going to stick a baseline in. Okay, I'm going to stick a baseline which is going to be about there, like that. That's the front edge of the part. And let's take a look at this and see what we would see again. Looking down from the top, we'd be able to see a big flat surface with a hole in it. Then we would see this kind of valley going on in here and then another big flat surface with a couple of holes in it. And we need to be mindful that that's curved at the end. All of those surfaces can be found in the construction lines that we've just put up. So let's try and figure this out. Let's have a look. The part is 30 millimetres thick. Okay. We've already drawn something here which we've said is going to be 16, so 30, roughly speaking, should be twice that. Okay, so we're looking at something that's roughly twice that thickness. So it's going to be about that thick. And this is what I'm talking about, getting your proportions correct. If that there is 16, then roughly 2 times 16 should equate to 30 if we're keeping our proportions right. Okay, so visible lines now. Let's do the little rectangle at the end. First of all, I think we can quite safely go like, oh, that's right, hand draw. Straight edge for construction only. There to there. Like that. There's the end piece. And there is the start of that little valley. And the end of the valley is right there. And we've got this curve at the end. Now I've already denoted the inside of the curve. The inside of the curve's got to touch this construction line here. So let's try and guess where the center line of this is. Probably around there. So we've got a curve to put in, which goes like that. So let's try and do this. 
just like that. Okay. Now, other things that we can see, we can see this little hole. We've already put up the, the side, the, the, the construction lines for it. So there's a little hole, it's got to fit in there. And then I've got two holes got to fit in, well, roughly speaking, probably about there and there, like that. So let's take this. Complete those as neatly as we can. And that's all the visible detail. So now we've got to ask ourselves, what is invisible? What, what, what do we have to denote with hidden detail lines? All right, well, there's not much. There's this little sort of crease in here, which is in the far side of the object. So I guess that should get a piece of hidden, that should get a piece of hidden detail going across like this. And the same is true over here. We've got a little crease here, which is hidden from us. So that's going to go down that construction line. And then we've got to put in centre marks. So let's carry this up. There's a centre mark has to go through the middle of that half cylinder. And there are centre marks on each of these circles like this. It tells us that they're circular. And that's it. As far as a top view goes, as far as a plan view goes, let's now go and think about our end elevation. Now the end elevation is going to live over this side of the page somewhere. And what it's asking us to do is it's asking us to imagine ourselves standing over here, looking in that direction at this shape right here and asking ourselves, what can we see? What can we see? And we're going to put it over here. So I want, I want this to hit a bounce line and then to somehow be projected down into this space right here. So we're going to put a bounce line in, 45 degree bounce line. We're not allowed to measure it or anything like that. Okay. But depending where we put that bounce line determines where on the page the drawing goes. If I put the bounce line here, then that means that these lines go across and they bounce down. And it means that our end elevation ends up squeezed in too close to the elevation. If I put the bounce line away out here, then it becomes too close to the page edge can't get dimensions around it, so let's put it in probably around there. Okay, so we try our best to get a 45 degree line up like that. By the way, here's a little trick if you're wanting a 45 degree line is to take a sheet of paper and fold it so that one edge touches the other edge like this. And that is now 45 degrees, and you can use that to check how accurate you've been. I've been not too bad, actually. I'm happy with that. Okay. All right. Construction lines. Let's project these across. All the points of interest. Project across. Outside of the circles. Um, outside of that circle. And that one. And this one. Finally, the outside of the shape will bounce them down. And of course, we've got to project over from the elevation as well. So we've already done these two lines. It's pretty much the inside of the valley has to go across. And the outside of the little valley has to go across as well. Okay, so somewhere in this crisscross of lines is the end elevation of this part right here. So let's ask ourselves, what would we definitely be able to see? Well, we'd definitely be able to see the surface in that curve right there. So that would be in there to there and there to there. Of course, we can't tell it's a curve from looking at the side. Only the plan view tells us that. But nonetheless, we'd see it as a rectangle. And we'd also be able to see this bottom part of the bracket in here. Again, we wouldn't be able to know that that's curved from this point of view. But we draw it in. It's a rectangle. And that's pretty much it for visible details. That's everything that's visible to us. 
What about the things that are invisible? We've got the bottom of the valley to consider. Okay, we sent a line across for that. And we've got a number of little holes cutting through. So let's follow these lines. Let, let's, let's look at the close-up ones first of all. So it comes down here, and it's between these two. There. And then these ones are between these two lines. And they come down, and that's between there and there. And then the far away hole is between those two lines. There and there. And of course all those holes now also need centre marks. show that they're cylindrical and I think that's pretty much it for the elevation somewhere on your drawing you're going to need a title box all right so let's not forget about that let's stick a little title box in and the things that your title box should have for sure is it needs the third angle projection symbol which is a circle and a circle and a truncated cone all joined with a couple of centre lines like that and we should also put put your name in there, write your name please write the date write the fact that it's part 2 and also it might be useful to write the units as well okay, for a good title box the only thing that remains on here is to put some dimensions in now I'm not going to dimension everything right now Okay, just remember to keep your dimensions, your big dimensions far away from the shape and your smaller dimensions closer in. Okay. What you'll also need is view labels, don't forget about them as well. Okay, so let's give them a lot of space. I like to put in these tram lines. And for now, for that video, that's us pretty much done with this one, okay? In a later video, I'll show you how to dimension this properly. But for now, that's how you assemble the three views of the orthographic.